I, okay. All right, is that working? Good? Katie got me all set up. So, um, hi everyone, good afternoon. Yes, I'm gonna give an update on the data sharing spoke. Um, so just an overview, I'm gonna give a, a little bit of context and background. A lot of uh, the discussion in our panel actually um, is very relevant, the panel before lunch very relevant to what we are addressing, give an update and share a little bit about next steps. And in terms of context, you know, what, what is our motivation? Um, instead of putting the um, acknowledgements at the end, I really do want to acknowledge this, this full team uh, that's working on the data sharing spoke because it's been a collaborative effort and uh, primarily um, a collaboration with the Drexel Metadata Research Center, um, CSAIL at MIT, and then the computer science, um, people from the computer science department at Brown. And we've worked um, a bit with also the, the hub itself um, at Columbia. So, uh-oh. Okay. Now, what happened? My images were not showing, Katie. They showed before. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> I can, I, if they can't show, I can talk through them, but yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Good. That's great. Okay. Huh. One moment. Yeah, no, I, they didn't come through. I can just show them. And I, I can talk through it later. It's, it's, um, can we just put them up? Not, not in um, slideshow, like regular. That would be good enough. So we've all seen things like this in the popular press and newspapers, and some of us are working on these kinds of projects about how data can help address ground world challenges. This one's about open data and agriculture, on agriculture and nutrition and uh, addressing world hunger. Um, here's uh, from the New York Times about you know, giving up your data to cure cancer, and then from why um, also the cure is in the data. So I think we've all seen things like this. Um, let me take another step in this direction and have a question for you all. And that is, has anybody here ever deposited data in some kind of repository? Just a few. Okay, more and more people are owning up to it. Was it an open repository? Yeah, okay. How about a restricted? Anybody deposit somewhere where it's restricted? One, two, three, okay. Um, don't know, like I deposited and don't know? Anybody? Maybe, we got a shrug. Um, haven't, but thought about it, or no, I'm gonna have to. Okay, so has anybody ever shared research data with a colleague? Yeah, good. 
So I did, and actually it helped me get tenure. It's a long time ago, but um, it was good because the data wasn't published, and every time they published, they had to like, cite the paper, which made them ask for the data. So, um, okay, next point. Has anybody ever thought, well, if only we could get that data, and I think this all came up this morning already, about health records or purchase behaviors or energy consumption, you know, we could test our algorithm, we could conduct some more robust research, and we could have real impact. So I think this is clear from some, some of our discussions, but then people, you can't, because there are legal issues, and there is privacy, and there are policies, and these are real challenges that are impacting our ability to share data. So this is just a little table. It, it, um, you know, people classify these issues, and this is just one way of looking at them. Um, there are other ways people have discussed it, and, and I don't really want to repeat everything that was said um, earlier, but um, under policy, one of, the, one of the biggest challenges, I'm just going to highlight what's in red, is that people might be willing to do it and follow a policy, but there's this fear of, like, they don't want to lose control of their data down the line. This is, you know, they can go through it and everything's fine, but the, the stop is, what's going to happen to it after? Um, in the licensing area, there's uh, CC0, but this is clearly not addressing these other cases when there are, there's policy and legal issues and so forth. Um, security, I didn't put anything in red, but we know that's a biggie. And then I'm just going to go over to the last one, which is incentives, and say something there. And that is, there is a cultural shift that has been happening in the open science, open data community there is still a huge learning curve in, the, in data where data is restricted and so forth. And, and you know, convincing people why, the, why would they want to even share their data. Um, and there is uh, work to be done there. Okay. But we all know there's merit in sharing data, talking about academic and industry partnerships, or government and, and academics and so forth. When we enter into these kinds of data sharing activities where there is privacy concern, legal issues, sensitive data, the sharing doesn't take place without the lawyers. And lawyers cost money and they take a lot of time. So the, the sort of classic scenario is industry wants to share their data with a computer science part, department or some data science faculty member and everyone gets together at the table with their lawyers and has good intentions, and six months later, the agreement is not worked out. Or eight months later, the agreement's worked out, but it's not all the right data. Um, and this happens over and over again. A year later, maybe the full agreement works out, and everyone, it's the right data, and everything's been agreed upon both by the industry and the, the academic institution, but the, the researcher has moved on. So we are looking at this issue in the, in the spoke, uh, the data sharing spoke, and trying to figure out a way to automate that process that happens over and over again, and even mint the kinds of agreements, these conversations that happen over and over again. So within the Northeast Big Data Hub, there is a data sharing ring, and within that, we have a spoke um, grant, um, and the title is A Licensing Model and Ecosystem for Data Sharing. And the three goals are to create this licensing framework generator, as I said, mint the licensing, um, develop the platform that would enforce the licenses, and we're working with what is called Data Hub, but it's now called ShareDB, and that comes out of MIT. And then um, part of the role of where I really am <coughs> and, and my, my center is the metadata um, making sure that the licenses are described correctly and, and so forth. So it's interesting in our team meetings, you know, um, some, some the, the, the guy, Tim at Brown, says we can solve 80% of this. I'm kind of like if we can solve 20% of that conversation that ha happens over and over again, I, would be, I think it would be a contribution. So our project kicked off um, in the fall of 2017, and we had a workshop at Drexel, Enabling Seamless Data Sharing in Industry and Academia. And there's quite a few people here that were at that workshop. It was a great workshop. Uh, for two days, we had uh, over 50 people, people from academic, ac academia, industry, government, 
and so forth, and we heard from the trenches. And one of the reasons we, we heard from the trenches, we wanted to hear from people who did data sharing in this uh, industry academic kind of partnership, and it worked out, and why it worked out, and also sort of war stories. The, the sharing that took place and didn't work out, why didn't it work out, and what would have been different. And there is a report that has been um, created and um, these are the outcomes in terms of collecting agreements, um, building a trusted platform, and so forth. So, our progress. I'm running out of time, but um, we have collected data sharing agreements, and we have mined them and looked at a way to structure the, the metadata infrastructure underlying the system. And so these are our, our, our high-level categories, and we've got all kinds of attributes, and I think it's really hard for people to steer, uh, stare at at data attributes, but there's a lot going on. And in moving forward, we have uh, been very mindful of the whole standards metadata process where this is, you know, there's 14 standards, let's create one universal one, and you come up with 15 standards. We don't want to do that, so we've in our work been paying attention to a lot of existing standards and making our work interoperable. And so this is probably hard for you to read, but it is um, looking at existing standards in um, different areas of data publication, licensing, identification, and so forth. And so these are other um, initiatives and metadata standards that we're very well connected with. So that's that on the metadata infrastructure. In terms of our prototype system, uh, you can imagine somebody coming to a system and checking controlled access, I want usage rights, I want warranties, and so forth. And so we do have an instance now of ShareDB, and it's up there. And at the top, I kind of enlarge those areas, my, pro my privacy profiles, create new agreement, and so forth. And that is um, uh, what the system looks like now. So you can see, I don't know how this works, but create new profile. You could check HIPAA, you could check PII removal, um, and then here is just um, a doctoral student. My doctoral student was pulling around, so she put some data in. You can see names, and then under gender, you can see gender, and then you can see um, human and dog um, just playing around here. And then you can apply the HIPAA, remove column, and so forth, and then you apply the privacy profile. Um, and so the green over there in the right corner, it's kind of a little hard to see on the light but it says um, apply, and so here we go with the data set. So there's other things going on in this prototype, but here is a HIPAA compliant, um, um, we're, we're at, you know, uh, prototype stage. Okay, last thing, algorithmic work related to the project. Um, I'm just gonna skip over this, but we've been mining the licenses to look for language that we could mint um, in the license, the, the, we've collected agreements that have been successful, and we've been mining them to help us with our metadata infrastructure, but also the language of the licenses. And that, that's not going to mean a whole bunch to you, but what it is is looking at terms to the left and right in, in natural language um, in terms of uh, popularity. And also the other area is working on um, differential private um, querying, and this came up this morning. So there's some work going on there at MIT. So conclusions, work is underway. It was a lot of heavy lifting to get started and actually collect the licenses for us or the agreements to understand. And we almost felt like we needed an agreement from people to collect them. We've got infrastructure to build on. We're continuing to collect agreements and study them. Um, and um, making, making part, we're connected with the Research Data Alliance and other groups. And a webinar, we're looking to have a webinar in April and another workshop at Drexel. So, okay. Thank you. It's a homepage for the project. So I don't think I have time for any questions, right?